Yeah. I think that anytime you're awake, <laughs> that if you can have a better understanding of how to carry your body so that it works for you and with you as opposed to against you, uh, it's going to make life better. Does it, does it make your playing better? I'm glad you feel nice, but does this help you play? <laughs> And, you know, of course, if it helps you play, then it's going to maybe help you get some semblance of a career. So, um, and noticing a, a marked improvement. I'm thinking sort of continuously looping the instruction, free the neck, free the neck. <laughs> it's like the right path, and it feels more natural getting out of the way of the sound. Completes a completely different sound that's better, it's more consistent, there's, no, there's not as much strain in it. It's interesting to me how Fixing something sort of fundamental, so something that's holding you up, yep. gives you that awareness of the smaller things, like uh -huh. the little details that make a big difference. So everything's connected. Yeah. Well, you know, I was a trumpet player um, by training. I went to the undergraduate school at Northwestern University School of Music, and I have a graduate degree from Manhattan School, and I did play professionally. So what happens here, for example, at Juilliard or out in Aspen where I work and with professionals is, is I've lived that life. I went to conservatory, I understand the pressures, I understand um, the kinds of things involved in being a musician. It might range from physical things like having to sit in an orchestra pit or um, looking up at a conductor who's conducting an opera, or it might involve the pressure of putting on a recital, or sitting down and sight reading on a professional job and having to be absolutely perfect, for example, in a recording or something like that. So I understand the nature of what they live through, and it makes it much easier to communicate and to apply the principles of the Alexander work to what they do. Pause there. Is that any different? Yeah. So what do you get that's different? Um, I'm gonna keep coming right up. It all while feels I talk. much more. It feels much more the same mm -hmm. as in the whole phrase. I felt less like I was doing things and more that it was just one breath and there. And, and there you go. Okay. Yeah. Which Were you? Mean, I was kind of surprised that I that as I was going higher and higher, I didn't have to do as much as I thought I was going to. <laughs> good. It's always good to do less. It's a kind of a work where people get self-conscious in a very good way. So conscious of themselves, so that they can be in charge of how they behave physically and mentally throughout any activity. Okay, I can play this chord, and it doesn't require my, my back tightening to make that sound. But because of, you know, maybe bad habits from years past, I, I, I make myself think I can force it. So, so it's a bit of a mind game. I was interested in Alexander Technique because um, when I came to Juilliard, I actually had a recurrent injury that had been um, in my arms, tendinitis, for about three years. I had tried um, massage therapy, um, even a chiropractor, um, saw a neurologist. I tried a number of different things. Um, finding a solution at this point was kind of a last ditch effort to try to um, preserve my playing and. Um, uh, my alternative at that time was to become an accountant, so I was trying to keep my, um, my music playing alive. Yeah. It's a little more space and might direct your attention towards where your collarbones are and think very broad and wide out to the shoulders. We'll bring you again that way. I'll stay here as you put your hands... It started giving me more of a framework to apply what the massage therapist, what my piano teachers were teaching me. I think what they all had to say was valid, but as long as I was pushing my shoulders together, as long as I was pushing my spine down, I was working against myself. It's not a series of exercises. It's not someone saying, if you do 10 of these and 10 of those, you'll be stronger and better. Because if you do 10 of these and 10 of those in a manner that's wrong, you won't be stronger and better anyway. Think about lengthening in your spine. It's very much about uh, connecting mind and body reactions. 
So we learn, um, learn to recognize if you're maybe tensing unnecessarily. You learn to mentally direct your body so that you can prevent and or release tensions and go on and function with quite a lot of energy. Realized I needed help and I needed to find a different sort of help than I'd ever received before. And Alexander work was fascinating to me. So I checked it out. Breath work was needed. Locked up ribs after so many years of hard work in the opera. My tendency is when I get into a high pressure situation and probably wind and brass players in general, we tighten up. And when you're nervous and you get tight, it's going to choke off your sound. And the Alexander technique gives us skills with which to combat that tendency to tighten up. It's an amazing experience to watch in minutes how the use of the body has this profound effect on what the person is doing. Good, how was that? It's a lot better. Um, you can let the horn out for a second. Can you describe what was better from your point of view? Yeah, just actually keeping in mind what you were saying about the neck and thinking more up. And I, just everything, I, I don't know, maybe I'm thinking too many things at the same time, but it seemed to snap into place in terms of it didn't feel tight, as tight. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard the difference in the sound change, but when I got up to that last note, both those, those last two times, they were completely consistent. Yeah, the sound remained consistent throughout the registers. Well, I had the guitar department at both Juilliard and the Aspen Music Festival, so I'm interacting with students all the time, and I inevitably will suggest that they take Alexander Technique because it really gives them a better understanding of their body, how it interacts with the instrument, and the optimal way of, of carriage. The better aligned my body is, the better aligned my students' body, bodies are, the more efficiently we can play. And if there's more efficiency in your production, there's a lot more fun to be had when playing music. What's happening to the ribs? Compressive. Thank you, compressive. compressive. And what would that do, singers, for your breathing? Press against the Mm. And what would you say? Inhibit. Absolutely. Inhibits it. The Alexander Technique is hugely popular here at Juilliard and at Aspen. In Aspen, they join a lottery to be able to get into the class. Here at Juilliard, we always have wait lists. The classes are very small so that we can give individual attention. And um, they seem to go very well. <laughs> we often get students saying, is it okay if I fail this so I can take it again? <laughs> and I, of course, I think that's all right, but you can't fail in the Alexander Technique. Well, Lori is a great person, and she's fun to be around, and as a teacher, she's very kind, she's very gentle, very thorough, and you really enjoy the session with her. You don't really want it to end. I have so much freedom in my body, and it's, it's mostly due to the work that Lori and I did. It's easy to communicate with her about the type of sound that I'm looking for. She understands it. She gets it. As somebody who completely understands what we do and what it is that is going to help us be the best we can be. She's someone who is very easy to trust and that's really the first step towards um, being able to actually do any of this kind of work. So many things could have been so much easier for so much longer if I had just done it sooner. <laughs>